right, all right, all right. Jimmy, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I am good. Here we are from the margins with James Afon and David Washington. Here yeah, we that's... go again. All right, Jimmy. The vice presidential debate. Your thoughts. Wallace is a really nice guy <laughs> who doesn't not have a killer's instinct. I don't think he's ever had to have a killer's instinct. I think he's always won his races by being Mr. Nice. Uh, I must admit that J.D. Vance uh, surprised me. He was not the jerk like his counterpart. He mm -hmm. tried to be kind of civilized. He can't even be agreeable that, yeah, we might disagree on certain things. He refused to admit that uh, Trump lost the last election. He tries to, well, yeah. let's talk to the future. But I, re realistically, he, he was coined in a couple of things by Walsh. But I must say that his people prepared him so he didn't screw up and put in a silver platter something for Walsh to be able to seize on, which yeah. I think is a very good preparation. And to be quite honest, uh, he did not say, ex with the exception of two or three crazy things. Other than that, most of the things he said made sense, so I will call it a draw. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Um, I, I would say the same thing. It, it was a draw. Um, I'm glad that the nastiness that has been shown on the campaign trail uh, between these two uh, was set aside for the most part. Uh, what was shocking to me was the number of times that there was agreement between the two. And I said, hey, okay, you know, okay, there's some agreement. Maybe uh, we can uh, get Congress to uh, agree among its members to, on a lot of these issues and get some real, you know, legislation uh, passed. Don't push it. <laughs> Don't push it. Congress is full of idiots. And so is the Senate. <laughs> if not, just take our two senators from the, from my state. God. One is smarter than the other, but not by much. Right, right. Do you think that this um, debate uh, moved the needle in either direction for uh, their respective uh, campaigns? Uh, no. People okay. say that there's undecided out there. I don't think that there's undecided. It's just people, are they ready to hold their nose and pull a lever? And by this, I mean some Democrats. There's a lot of Republican friends of mine who are telling me they can't vote for Trump and they might not vote or they will vote for Kamala. Now, that's the one that I think would this promote them to vote for those Republicans for Kamala. Are there some people out there that will look at between walls and vines and convince themselves to vote for Harris or Trump? No. Let's be honest. Cult, uh, Trump is a cult. He could say that, I, I, I tend to, I hate to say this, but I'm going to agree with him. He could shoot somebody in Fifth Avenue, kill them, and his half will say, yeah, it's okay. He killed somebody. Uh, the other half of us will say, that's wrong. So, yeah, he has a cult. Uh, there's a difference. Republicans fall in love with their candidates. Democrats fall in place. Uh, and let's put this honestly. We thought our candidates sucked. We thought that if we went with our candidate, yeah. we would lose. lose. And yeah. we had a problem whatsoever and say, hey, hey, there's the door. Let's bring in somebody new. And that was Joe Biden. We forget that we pushed Joe Biden out. He wanted to race. His wife wanted him to, to, to be in the race. But basically, the powers, including Nancy Pelosi, sat down with him. You're going nowhere. Get out. Uh, mm -hmm. That is the race that I think we need to understand. We don't fall in love with our candidates. We, we, we say, OK, this is the one. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how these last days count. But let's put on this, be honest. Ballots by mail already have been received. I have mine on my Florida. kitchen counter. Okay. Uh, so you could vote tomorrow, and no matter what they say next week, uh, it's too late for you. I think, is it next Sunday that early voting starts? 
I believe so, yes. So we're, a week, so. Yes. we're, eight, we're nine days away from go, being able to go in to an early voting site and vote. And if my numbers are incorrect, please correct me. But between vote by mail and early voting, it's a little bit over 50%. Correct. Yes, correct. You are very much correct. And that's why I tell people, my candidates um, and other uh, consultants, that the election is won in vote by mail and early voting. And to clarify, Jimmy, uh, early voting here in Florida can, can legally start on October 21st, Monday, October 21st. So we're, what, um, 17 days away? Uh, 17, 16 days away from early voting starting here in uh, Florida. Correct. So basically, you're looking at, let's say, the 22 or 23 percent that they say I requested vote by mail. So those people are going to vote way before the end of this month. As a matter of fact, as my understanding is correct, they've been receiving already people's votes by mail. That's correct. So it's, it's a concern that you, you, you might have. And uh, I've noticed that one of the stupidities that a lot of people still think, and it's even the media, we are so 45 days away from, no, you're not. Uh, technically, vote by mail is there, and in seven to, to, to eight days, or no, excuse me, 17 days away from you going in for 10 straight days to go either where any place in the county Put down your driver's license and vote in five minutes. That's right. That's right. No um, line, nothing. No worry. I understand that uh, for the Democrats, um, the DNC is infusing $400,000 soon to arrive here in Florida uh, for uh, specific uh, races. Uh, of course, we're, we were uh, told by the Harris Walls campaign that, you know, additional funds was coming for Florida. And I'm like looking around and asking, you know, my uh, friends in local Democratic Party, where is this money? The money that was promised in the past, the money that was raised. I'm just like, where is it? And why aren't we seeing this? Why, if this is supposed to be the most uh, 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 influential election of our lifetime, uh, with the existential crisis in the Republic, uh, Republican Party that we're facing, um, where's the sense of urgency? Where is the money and where is it um, um, targeting our voters? And, and I'm just not seeing it. And as a super voter, I, <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't. Maybe I'll check my spam folder <laughs> for the, any of their emails, uh, which I'm, I'm sure they are. Um, but I, I just don't see the urgency. Well, let me clarify. You consult. I have been working with inside the party for years. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a state of, of Illinois. The party takes for granted that Illinois is going to vote Democrat. Yeah. Uh, they, their spending in Illinois is marginal to best. Uh, the the uh, electoral votes, even if Kamala wins by a thousand votes, the whole state of Illinois doesn't matter. She gets them all. <coughs> so the, the, we talk about the swing states, and let's put it bluntly, Florida's not among them. The party has realized that they're going to lose Florida, so investing money in Florida to them is a waste of money, a waste of time, a waste of energy. So I'm surprised that there's money and I think that money is mostly coming because some people have in their mind the belief that Debbie could take out Rick Scott. Well, and I also believe that if I buy a scratch lotto, I'm going to make a million dollars. Never <laughs> happens, but I still have the belief. Uh, <laughs> sorry for those of you who don't know that I'm kind of sarcastic. But uh, the state parties are investing Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, Nevada, no, no, North Carolina, and Georgia. There is where the heavy money goes. Because in their mind, if they win Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan, 
that takes Kamala to 270. She's the next president of the United States. If we were to lose Pennsylvania, but win uh, North Carolina, she'll be two votes short. And if we win Georgia, it's over the top. So basically, that is the thing. The same with Arizona and Nevada. Why? Because they're in play. Uh, Florida is not in play. Let's, let, let's stop pretending that we're in play. The Florida Democratic Party has become a joke. Uh, they have mm -hmm. not organized any. Debbie is not counted with any help from them other than a vice, which some of it is not even good. Uh, but realistically, what Debbie's done is money that she's raised. And basically, Scott has not even spent that much money. And, and, and let, let's put it this way. Scott has not spent much money in Orange County. He has not spent much money in uh, Broward County. He has not spent much money in Palm County. He has not spent too much money in Jacksonville. He's spending most of his money in the rest of the state, yeah. including Miami. Yes, because that's Democrats correct. Grew up and lost Miami, which they should have never done, but they have. Uh, that's because of the mismanagement of the party of every four years electing a person who's going to be a great fundraiser and is going to straighten out the thing. Four years later, we lose the presidential election. It's because of that person's fault. We kick them out and we elect somebody new. That's the history for the last 20 years of the Florida Democratic Party. Florida Democratic Party right now taking away the committee man, committee woman is a joke. But right. I understand. Please go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, no, I, 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 in, as we talk about the um, uh, election 2024, um, I am aware tangently inside the Democratic Party that there's a, a change in the bylaws in regards to um, the committee man, committee woman, that they're actually expanding it out, if I understand correctly, to more to make more members uh, okay. as committee men and committee women. What, what's the deal there? In the uh, rationale. This, no, they want to destroy the committee man, committee woman. Let, let's put it this way. I'll give you the history. You had one committee man and one committee woman per county. Now, depending on the strength of that county, they did not have one vote. Okay? And mm -hmm. Florida and Orange County, we had, I as committee man had 32 votes and when I was coming in, it was Nancy. Nancy Jacob had 32 votes for a total of 64 votes. And to elect the county chair, uh, the party chair, you need a certain amount of things. To be blunt, yes, we would go the night before the election. We would go into a room. We would work out a deal as who was going to be a chair, who was going to be the vice chair. Well, not the vice chair, but who was going to be the chair, who was going to be the secretary and the treasurer. Uh, basically, and if there was any changes to the bylaws, we had to do it. Now they're trying to say this bullshit, and I'm going to call it bullshit, that we want to make it more evenly distributed, so Orange County is going to have 25 committee men. Now, notice that there's not going to be committee woman. It's committee men. Uh, so basically, oh. it could be man or woman, and it's going to be 25. And each one of those is going to have two votes. <laughs> Good luck finding 25 people who are going to be that committed to the party, who are going to go to Fort Lauderdale mid-year, get a hotel room at $199, mm. and spend their three days talking about state party matters. It's not going to happen. <laughs> So basically, you have destroyed that. And what you trying to, they did also the bylaws is that those who show up would constitute a quorum. So uh, that that's it. Uh, wow. So that if you don't go to three meetings, you're going to be removed and you're no longer a state committee man. And you're going to be elected every two years. It is virtually <laughs> possible. So. The only thing that they screwed up 
they didn't really eliminate or change the proxy matter. So technically, if I was to get the other 24 people to give me their votes, and I was the only one who showed up, I could I could do what I used to do in the past. But they, they don't think that's going to happen. Uh, Miami is completely upset about it. But basically, if there's one thing we could thank Nikki is for screwing up the party. She followed the wrong advice of the wrong people who just want to control the party and make it easier, and in their opinion, to reelect Nikki next year. And good luck with that. Wow. I, I knew that there were some changes coming to the committee man position. Um, I did not know the significance of it. Um, that's pretty significant. And one of the frustrations that I've had with the party is, is the constant meetings to change the bylaws and, and vote up or down, changes to those bylaws and revisions and the vote and things like this. Uh, it does make this, this change does make things a, a little bit more convoluted, uh, definitely show uh, 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 more people get more people involved. Uh, however, if a party chair or a, a a block of individuals within the party are shrewd enough, they can dominate the voting and and have uh, a block of maybe twenty or or or, or fifteen, the majority of these uh, committee men um, um, of their choice voted in and, and we could possibly have um, committee men from one area or a few areas of uh, the county representing all of the county and not necessarily representing all the issues of the uh, uh, of the county or the the Democrat uh, membership or or the Democrat uh, demographic um, they, we have problem enough uh, already with uh, representation and responsibility of uh, the committee man position right now. Um, I really don't know, you know, what our committee man has done to move uh, the party forward, and uh, that's unfortunate. Well, th th that's the other thing. The chair has a lot of power. The chair turns around and says, okay, I'm not going to have a meeting until – this and I'm going to decide the agenda, and basically, if you take the uh, the by, the past bylaws, not the current one, past bylaws, I would have to get talk get on the phone and talk to at least twelve uh, committee men that has substantial vo votes, get them to agree with me to put something on the agenda, and it could go onto the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, basically, it was a, a matter of a show. The only time that I would say that there was some de democratic procedure is was when we were electing the chair. And the, we lost that uh, thing when basically they shoved down our throat the gentleman from South Florida who, we ha who had to quit out because he was a misogynistic pig. Uh, a woman like... Uh, total despair so he had to quit but other than that uh last time around we elected nikki because out of rebellion but i don't think that people were thinking well nikki is the answer either it was just that we don't you're not gonna sh shove down my throat anybody else so they said huh we need to get rid of these committee men and committee women and make it a very dilute the other problem i have with it is as follows uh i don't think they they realize what they what they're setting themselves up for if they have a meeting for Florida Day, which I do, to discuss bylaws and stuff like that, they're going to have the three large counties within car driving distance, which is Miami, for Lauderdale, and West Palm Beach. You're going to yeah. have at least enough votes there to vote yep. down anything that she may or may not propose, especially if enough of Orange County and of uh, Hillsborough and Pinellas County show up. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how these things work because realistically, I don't think that they, they, they have realized that things have changed. And if they make those meetings by Zoom, oh, my oh, God. Geez. God no. forbid to have a meeting with over a 1,000 people on Zoom, I just <laughs> count the votes. 
Jimmy, does each county get the same number of committeemen, or is it proportion proportional? It's proportional to the number of registered Democrats and the amount of Democratic victory in that county. As a matter of fact, Miami lost a lot. Miami was largest, and now it is. <laughs> the amount of Democratic victories? Uh, no, the amount of registered Democrats and the amount that the, you the county went blue. And since the oh. county went red for DeSantis, they lost a lot of their power. <laughs> so a county like Orange, you know, which has been consistently blue until it's not, um, they would they have a, some advantage uh, in, in having the number of registered Democrats. I think the fifth largest uh, county in the in the state. And then, of course, you know, um, you have uh, a fair number of elected uh, Democrats, I, I guess, at the state level, uh, when you look at the uh, state Senate and also the um, we've got two races already decided. Let me put you something so you can understand this. The way that the the numbers are based on is not on victories of local electors. I'll give you an example. Okay. Kamala Harris is probably going to lose in the state of Florida. That's pretty take that. But she's going to win Orange County. And if she sure. wins Orange County by more than 20,000 votes, that's at least three additional state committee men and state committee women. Oh. If Debbie wins a statewide race here by more than 10,000 votes, which I doubt, but if she does, that's one one additional uh, vote that Orange County would get. So uh -huh. it's all based also on the state races. So even though we can lose Florida, but we won here, that's why Tampa's always been upset with us because Tampa's the margins of victory and Tampa are 10, 12,000. Here, the 21, 22,000. So basically, that's why we get more, more, more. Yes. They get them, ah. There's more people over there. There's more racial Democrats. Yes, but the margin of victory is quite different. Wow. That's, that's a very strange metric to use to determine your um, leadership. I mean, <laughs> Uh, I mean, orange is blue right now. And, you know, the effort you would think uh, being put into the more challenging campaigns, um, uh, you would think that the Democrats would do that. Uh, but I, I guess there's no incentive to really work hard on campaigns uh, for the Democrats uh, if you know that it's almost on automatic that uh, Orange County being blue are going to vote blue and in but, high margins in some look, races. The state party doesn't help anybody. It tries to take money away from them, everybody, but doesn't help anybody. But the interesting thing is that when we put this in perspective, we keep forgetting that we have shot ourselves in our own foot. Okay, how so? That uh, some people want uh, the commission and the city officials to be elected party-wise, and even the school board elected party-wise? Yes. It's because when you you can't call a commissioner's race a Democratic victory because they were elected nonpartisan, so it doesn't right. count. And the same thing for school board, the same thing for uh, the city of Orlando, the city of Okoye, the city of Maitland, the city of... Ah. So those are not Democratic victories. Those are victories. And the people there might be seen might be Democrats, but they don't count as Democratic victories under the bylaws. Got so you. The only, okay. the only races here that will count towards our numbers are nationwide, which are the, uh, the, the presidential, statewide, which is the governor and the state uh, senators, uh, congressional districts yet count. And you have to understand that Orange County really has one when you take half here and half there. Yeah. Uh, because we don't have a purely congressional dem Democrat district uh, that's only in Orange County. So that also takes away from us the same with our state and our Senate, Senate races. So it, it, it is a mix of things that we have to understand how this works. But basically, yeah, 
uh, we did better last last election than Miami. Right, right. Wow, this whole system, you know, just you know, trying to to follow the bylaw, the the processes, the procedures of uh, of the Democratic Party uh, in itself is is a job. Uh, it's tenuous and it's time consuming. And uh, I just I, I, I see more time tweaking the bylaws so I actually see in 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 the off season if there's ever a off season uh, I, I see more time uh, tweaking the bylaws than I do actual interaction with uh, Democratic voters and growing the party with these new uh, with, with with Democrats from the community. It would be nice to, to see, you know, 300, you know, members after this election. And uh, what are we doing to bring them in and, and thus uh, open up the party to, you know, fresher ideas and, you know, potential new donor base? Well, that's, that's going to be interesting, to be quite honest. What they have been doing for the last 12 years is centralizing the power in the chair. That's okay. what giving the chair every power, removing it from the committee man, removing it from the committee woman, removing it from the, uh, the, the, the area parties, leaving the area parties up to them on their own uh, mm -hmm. and functioning on their own, fundraising on their own and not helping them in one iota. So that's why when people tell me, why can't we win in Florida? It's because we took a machine gun and shot ourselves in the foot and both. We blow up wow. both. We, we don't have a. We, it's not that we don't have a foot to stand on. We even have have a foot to stand on. Mm -hmm. it's, it, yeah, and this has been more people who want to consolidate the power in the chair, and don't care about if we win or not. Wow, that, that's uh, too bad for the party and uh, a missed opportunity uh, to really get to the heart of the matter, and that's uh, its membership and growing it in my opinion, uh, at, at the local local level, uh, more local level in regards to the uh, state races, uh, but particularly here in Orange County and also the commissioner races. Any insight you want to, want to uh, give before we move on to the next topic? I think District 1 and District 5 and District 3 are going to be interesting races. I think the one that with the largest margin of winning, and it's not that large, is Kelly. Mm -hmm. and I put District Kelly 5. Down. District 5 is not that large. District 3 is going to be a surprise. I cannot predict that one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really can't. wish I could, but I can't. Mm -hmm. District 1 is was close the last time around, and I think it's going to be close this time at the end. Uh, my insight is that we're already electing somebody, and I'm not sure what the other, what the, the campaigns are doing. I, I really don't. So right. I'm concerned that we might be surprised just because we don't know what we're doing. I know what uh, my default line of thinking is that the incumbents will win out of incumbency. Uh, there's power in the incumbency. So District 1 and District 3 uh, will see a return of, uh, of the two commissioners there. As far as District 5, um, yeah. I will say now that uh, Steve Leary is being um, more recognizable in the community, he's, he's meeting with people, he's doing forums and debates, um, people are beginning to know who he is, um, and that is uh, to his advantage, it's especially when uh, you have the funds to do so. I haven't checked his financials lately. Uh, however, under the presumption of the information that I do know about his campaign and those who are funding him, thank you, Orlando Signal, uh, for providing that information. Uh, he does have the uh, financial wherewithal to uh, make a big push in this final month. Um, understanding Kelly's campaign uh, for Commissioner District 5, uh, the money's not there. Uh, there's a reliance now on 
uh, the welfare of others, uh, the charity of others, to, you know, volunteer to to show up at uh, mini grades that they're having and not the inf campaign infrastructure to make that final push. Um, just by the sheer, sheer numbers of Democrats versus Republicans, registered Democrats and registered Republicans in the district. Uh, I'm sorry there, got a little itch. Um, the Democrats uh, outnumber uh, the Republicans, so there's the advantage there. Um, the NPAs, that's a different story. The non-party affiliates, that's a different story. Um, mm -hmm. I, If turnout is at 85 uh, percent for those precincts that um, are supposed to come out, uh, that are expected to come out and vote. Um, I believe that will weigh heavily in favor of Kelly, Kelly's campaign. Uh, anything short of maybe 80, 75 percent, um, I think we could see Steve uh, Leary win the, win the seat. That depends on what areas also. Correct. I don't think people in East Orlando voting for Steve. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't think even I do. Uh, the area of UCF is going to be interesting because she's a professor there. And all you have to say to those students is that he's a developer and a Republican, and we know how they're going to vote. And they're going to be voting not because of Kelly, they're going to be voting because of Kamala. So let's stop pretending. That if they're voting, if they're voting in um, from Orange County, because I have a few associates who are alumni and, and current students of UCF, and they're telling me that a lot of kids are, are not registered to vote here um, in Orange County, uh, but from their respective homes. So oh, th th those who are out of states, you're correct. But you have to understand. A lot of the students in, in UCF are also from the around the state. Correct. And if they're from around the state, they 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 might go out to vote. And we have seen lines in UCF in the past in presidential elections. At yes, least sure. I, so that's one thing. The thing that I'm going to ask you a question: <coughs> What's the name of the gentleman who Emily Bonilla beat? That would be former commissioner Ted Edwards. Ted Edwards. I'll fund it, Emily, almost 10 to 1. That's correct. And second time around, who did she run against? She ran against uh, <laughs> Steve Leary. Well, Steve dropped out of the race. And so Anjali, Anjali um, um, <coughs> was uh, an opponent and uh, former representative Mike Miller. And uh, Mike joined the race late, had a lot of money, and he... Came up short. Money in District 5 has always been a joke. Mm -hmm. uh, the way they run the campaign for Ted Edwards, the same way they run it for Miller, is the wrong way to run it. Uh, people there in District 5, for some reason, want an environmentalist. Uh, that's how Bonilla won, and that's mm -hmm. how Kelly's going to win. Uh, I don't see, and I'm going to say this. Sure. We're already voting by mail. I've received nothing from Steve. I received something from Steve during the primaries, which were cards, uh, mailers, which I read because I'm a political science junkie. My wife doesn't. She, as far as she's concerned, if it's up to her, she'll throw in the garbage. Uh, <laughs> Yep. which most voters do. That's correct. Uh, so I'm not sure if his campaign is going to be effective enough and, and spend the money wise enough. Saying that he's been out in the community, I'm going to say something that I learned from the last one that you, we mentioned before we started recording, which is the East Orlando Chamber. East Orlando Chamber has people from District 3, District 4, and District 5, to be blunt. So That's everybody true. there who might even liked and voted for Steve, might not even live in, state, in District 5. Uh, the same for all the other races. So yeah. at this point, I would have to say, yeah. I don't see uh, any way or form, but a matter that we, uh, that that's going to help. 
uh, yesterday there was a function in the Orlando Art Museum for a, a, a kickoff of uh, Hispanic Month uh, of October. To be quite honest, there were some people there. And to be blunt, three quarters of the people were residents of the city of Orlando that uh, I could tell you live in, most of them in District 6, and District mm. maybe two, some of them, and others of them, and I say District 2 because I live in College Park. Uh, in that area. So, yeah, it's really something that is going to be, so, uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm more concerned to see how many votes does Kamala win in Orange County? Yeah. But not that she, I'm not even concerned if she's going to win or lose, just by how many. Uh, this is, this is uh, the bluest county and the state. I'm, I'm sorry, it is. Population-wise, it is the bluest. This is yes. the most liberal county that there is. So why am I bringing that up? Uh, they brought people from Winter Park, laws. Winter Park, laws. Winter Park, again, is going to lose. Winter Park is a beautiful neighborhood. I love to go there to eat. I love to go there to their farmer's market. It's a beautiful place. Don't misunderstand me. But half of the people there don't vote for Steve Larry. They're going to vote for Kelly. I agree. I agree. I agree. And so um, uh, I added this particular next topic uh, just to kind of throw a curveball to our listeners and viewers. And uh, we, we all hear about the October surprise. And, uh, you know, dating back to – um, what was it? Uh, Carter versus uh, Reagan and the uh, Iran hostage uh, situation. Um, what October surprise do you think uh, may happen or may not happen? The October surprise that we all know is going to happen. And this is the one that the war in, between Israel, Hezbollah, Hamas, Iran, it's not going to scale down. Let's stop pretending that yeah. not to, uh, wants this war because it helps his prospectus to get reelected. And, I, and as a student of politics, I respect that. Yeah. Uh, how bad does it get could be the October's surprise. The other one that nobody's thinking of because it does, it looks far fetched, is another attempt against Trump. Mm -hmm. Two. That, uh, and really, it's been one. Let me clarify they were checking out the hole before he even got there. He was not in range, he was not even being targeted. He was a hole behind. They caught up with the guy, and the guy never even made a shot, but his intent was to shoot him? Yes, I would agree yes. with that. Uh, can there be a third attempt? See, the problem with, with, with the, uh, the, the report that nobody read from the Secret Service, when you go open in the public and make rallies open in the public, you're setting yourself up for this. When you announce three weeks in advance where you're going to be, yeah, you're setting yourself up for, for a problem. You really are. So I would have to say this. Uh, that would That is the other one that could. Right. Uh, but major things, the, the problem is now that, you see, at the time of Carter, you really did not have early voting. And your voting by mail was limited to certain groups of people that would qualify, not just that you want to vote by mail and you want to vote in your house at 12 o'clock at night in your underwear. No, no, no. You <laughs> want to, you had to have a reason. So early voting started in 2000. So back in Carter's would have more of an impact because on November 5th, the hostages were still there. They hadn't been released and basically Reagan was promising, I'm going to get them released, which he did. 
or practical effects. That's what gave uh, Reagan the victory. So yes, it, that that could happen. Well, are people thinking that way? Most of the people who voted for Carter, who were over the age of fifty, are dead. Yeah. That's kind of scary to say. That they're dead. Uh, yeah. And those of us who are in our thirties when this happened have changed a lot of thoughts, even about Carter being a bad president. Right. And right. the thing that that people think it was the hostages. To me, it was not the hostages that took down Carter. It was the gasoline. Mm. Inflation, gas prices, the gas lines. Right. Yeah. Right. I I agree with you um, in regards to the war um, in uh, Israel uh, between Israel and uh, Hamas and Hezbollah. Uh, if there's ever going to be a an October surprise, it would stem out of that conflict. Um, and the October surprise spin to this uh, would be, as I post this to my mom, a, a ceasefire agreement. And uh, the ceasefire agreement, even as far advanced into this war that we've gone with uh, threats of, of uh, 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 bombing of the nuclear capabilities of Iran, um, this no longer becomes a proxy war. Uh, my um, hypothesis is that uh, one of the uh, candidates um, and likely Trump uh, will broker behind the scenes a ceasefire deal um, just before the election. And uh, I believe that that will definitely tip the election in his favor, thus ushering in another uh, Trump administration. That would be my hypothetical October surprise. Um, and he again, could. along the lines with what you were saying about uh, the Israel um, uh, war in, uh, in the Middle East. He could convince Netanyahu. I could tell you one thing just by personal experience. I don't see the people from Iran talking to him. I don't see the people from Hezbollah talking to him. And I don't see the people from Hamas talking to him because they see him as a Jewish puppet. So I don't mm. I don't see his him being able to do that. Neither of his people to do that. And I don't think because of what I call the cold uh, uh, thing in this country, it's going to be a close election no matter what. There's right. people who hate his guts to no avail. And there's people who I just met one two days ago who think that Jesus Christ is not as great as he is. Uh, so, okay. You know, uh, okay. And, and on that note, <laughs> are there topics you... What, 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 what predictions? Do you have any predictions of something that's going to be in the news the next week? Between this program and the next one, let's see. Oh, boy. Let's see. I thought that we'll have uh, some type of permanent agreement between the longshoremen and uh, the uh, foreign carrier owners. Uh, but it looks like allegedly, well, at least late last night, there was a temporary agreement or at least a temporary halt to the strike. Uh, but then I saw a blurb over my uh, news feed earlier this morning uh, saying that uh, there wasn't an agreement by the union workers to um, to this temporary uh, return to work. So I don't know what's going on. I have to catch up on the on the news. It's been a busy morning for me. Um, if there's any um, news maybe of significance, I just saw the uh, unemployment numbers come out and the unemployment numbers uh, look good. Um, unemployment dropped to 4.1, I think I read correctly, with over two, approximately 239,000 jobs added to the payrolls. Uh, where those jobs came from, I don't know. If they came from manufacturing, that is great news uh, for the manufacturing uh, sector. Uh, and it would, it, it would definitely uh, point um, positively for the uh, Biden-Harris uh, administration. Uh, so that economic news coming out. Um, 
Anything of significance, I, I think we'll we'll find from the campaign trail. Um, will we learn more about uh, Kamala Harris and her, you know, <laughs> her economic plans? Um, I know that Candace Owens has done a series about uh, her ethnic background and her heritage. Uh, will we learn more about you know some of the mis? Uh, misquotes or or, or, or or misspeakings of uh, of uh, Governor Walls. Um, as far as Trump, uh, I know there's been some concern about his health. If he's elected, he'll be the uh, oldest uh, serving president. Um, there has been health problems that have been identified or presumed in uh, in, in President Trump. Uh, would those play out? Um, and then also, how does a, a, a solid performance by um, Senator Vance uh, help uh, his help the uh, Trump uh, Vance campaign moving forward? So uh, anything can happen. Uh, we don't need another hurricane, you know, coming through Florida. Um, we're in the peak season of hurricane season. Uh, so you know, maybe a, a, a natural in, uh, natural occurrence. Uh, will be the, the top of the news. Um, it, it's hard to say, but right now, I think if uh, election day was held tomorrow, um, it would be uh, Vice President Kamala Harris's uh, to lose. Okay, I'm going to make a little bit bolder prediction than you. Between now and next week, Biden's going to be forced if there's not a, an agreement to invoke the law. And stop the uh, the strike uh, under the Taft, so Taft Hartley. Yeah, under the Taft Hartley law, he's going to be forced to do that, which would not set well with some of the other unions. But at least that way, he could get my toilet paper again. Uh, <laughs> what's this fascination in this country? Something's going wrong. Let's get toilet paper because the same thing happened with the pandemic. I don't sure. get it. But there's a problem. Let's get toilet paper. Uh, okay. No, I don't understand the fascination. Sorry, I don't. Uh, the other thing I'm going to predict that's going to sound very uh, strange is that we are going to hear more details of the charges against Trump because the judge in Washington, D.C. is going to release them for the public that have not been heard, and that is going to be an interesting way of seeing what has happened here. Uh, and last but not least, I'm more concerned about an October surprise in the county elections. We tend to forget Myra's situation with Kevin. Let's, let's call it the way it is. And the Sentinel has reported on it and still investigating that. So it's not something that's great. Die, die aside. I hear there might be an investigation to Austin and District 1. Uh, and kind of interestingly enough, uh, all the races that Sentinel has already endorsed. Uh, so I'm not expecting any of the local races to be a matter of that. Patrick won an investigation in the last month of the election on Betsy. I would be surprised if something similar comes in either District 3 or District 1. Yeah. So that's something that we might be talking about next week. Okay. All right. Well, All that's right. a... That's a good place uh, to end this particular episode. Uh, Jimmy, I want to say thank you again. Thank you. You know, doing this with me and to our viewers and listeners again, this is From the Margins with Jimmy Afont and yours truly, David Washington. And please, please let everyone you know, your family, your friends, those influencers that you know, those candidates, those electeds who may find this content interesting and uh, worth listening and watching. So uh, again, please like, share, and what I really love are the comments. I love responding to the comments. We will love to hear what you have to say. Let's be respectful. 
impactful. Bring your facts and not your feelings. This is From the Margins. I'm David Washington and my friend, Jimmy Afon. Thanks again, Jimmy. We'll see you next week. See you next week. All right.